Hello, my name is Sue and I work with the Youth and Community Development Team at Northern Beaches Council. Welcome to the second webinar in the Safe and Sound Wellbeing series. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Today is Marbo Day and also the final day of Re National Reconciliation Week. And this year's theme is In This Together. So this is very relevant in so many ways. I'd like to acknowledge all of those with a personal experience of suicide or mental ill health, as well as families, friends, carers and support services who help us. A special mention to our partner organisations on the Suicide Response Steering Group who continue to work collaboratively with us on a local action plan. That includes Lifeline Northern Beaches, Northern Beaches Police, CCMB, Northern Sydney Local Health District, Sydney North Health Network, Northern Beaches Hospital and representatives with lived experience of suicide. These webinars have been made possible thanks to grant funding from the New South Wales Ministry of Health. Over the next three years, this will allow us to train up hundreds of gatekeepers. These are community members who have regular contact with others within their community. We aim to provide our gatekeepers with suicide first aid skills and the knowledge of where to reach out for support. This will empower participants with the knowledge, skills and confidence to have conversations with others who are starting to show signs of distress. This will help build a safety net around us all with the aim of reducing suicide and supporting more people to live mentally well on the northern beaches. This is particularly important right now as it's been a tough couple of months for so many of us. The Safe and Sound webinar series features six free wellbeing webinars aimed at young people, those who support young people, men, women, LGBTIQA+, and seniors. In each webinar, you will hear from a range of local experts sharing information on key stresses, how to support others, and how to access local support services. Whether it's to help you or those around you, we hope everyone attending this webinar and watching them in the future will get something positive out of coming along. So today's webinar is Women Living Well, and we have four great speakers lined up for you. Kylie, Jackie, Simran, and Gil Gilda, are joining us from their homes. However, Mike and I are lucky enough to sit together here at Glen Street Theatre, albeit at a safe physical distance. So now I'd like to introduce Mike Burns, who will be moderating all of our webinars. Mike is a psychotherapist and a trainer with Lifeline Northern Beaches. Over to you, Mike. Thank you, Sue, for that lovely introduction. Welcome, everybody. Good to have you all here for tonight's webinar. So if you haven't watched a webinar using Zoom before, please note that your camera and microphone are automatically disabled when you enter. There'll be no slides, as this is a conversation-style webinar. You'll only be able to see one presenter at a time that is currently speaking. Of course, you'll see Sue and I here on the couch at Glen Street. The webinar will be recorded and will be available on the Northern Beaches Council website at a later time. So we'll hear from each presenter tonight for approximately 10 minutes and we'll have some time at the end of the webinar for some questions and answers. You can ask a question through the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen, it's about in the middle of the toolbar if you have a look there. And you can do that any time throughout the webinar and it can be done anonymously if you wish. So our first presenter tonight is Kylie from Relationships Australia. So welcome Kylie. And can you tell us a quick overview of what Relationships Australia offers through the Family Relationship Centre here on the Northern Beaches? So we'll just, just have to unmute you there, Kylie. <laughs> How's that, Kylie? That's great, thank you. Yay. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, we have an office here in DY at the Northern Beaches. At the moment, we're still all working from home and we're actually doing counselling and uh, mediation um, online. But this month, um, many of us are moving back into the office and I think by July we'll be there. But that doesn't mean that you can't ring up and make an appointment and, and actually get to do family counselling online or couples counselling um, or individual. We'd really love to see you in the flesh though, but we're still finding that there's lots of people like to do it this way because they you know, can stay safe and they don't have to travel, they can turn up on time. And so we offer um, counselling at the Family Relationship Centre for individuals, couples and families. 
but we also offer um, mediation for separating families to give them the best outcome with their parenting agreements and also their financial agreements. And so this is um, a step that people can take so they don't need to go through court or they don't have to worry and you'll have friendly people helping you come to an agreement in a safe way that's best for your children's interests. Um, we also have some wonderful groups that we run and on the Northern Beaches, they're very, very popular at the moment. One of our groups called um, Circle of Security, which is how to have um, good, secure relationships with your children, had 70 people on the waiting list because we're doing it um, online and then we'll be doing it with smaller groups. But our other groups we run for women um, are Women and Self-Esteem, as well as Women, Choice and Change. And that group is for women who've either been or are still in relationships with um, people who are, their partners are controlling or their ex-partners, or there's been some domestic violence. Um, we also have tuning into teens and um, some new groups coming up is one building resilience in a time of climate change and COVID anxiety. So, yes. Yeah, so thanks, Mike. There's some of the groups and some really, of the work we do. A really wide range of programs there. And obviously, you know, being able to access counselling on Zoom, while, while it's very different from face to face, can still be a significant support for people. So I recognise that um, it's a great thing that you're still offering that and people can still get that support yes. individually or as a couple or as a family. That's right, yes. And so, um, yeah, people can um, book in and there's, we have quite a lot of people who'll be able to provide that, professionals who've got psychology, social work backgrounds and um, graduate diplomas in counselling, family, um, childcare. Yeah, great. And, you know, my, my anticipation is that as people get more used to being able to access these services online or remotely, that that will be something that will continue to be offered more in a more widespread way through the community afterwards, which I think is a great thing. So um, for anybody who's hesitating, you know, I'd really encourage you to try that. It's a, it's a really um, effective way of, of seeking support. Um, so Kylie, we know at Lifeline Northern Beaches that many people who access our service for counselling are seeking help with managing relationships with family members. So could you perhaps, perhaps touch on some of the key stresses that women might experience when it comes to relationships within a family setting? Yes, thanks. I think women have traditionally and are still having the expectations on themselves of doing a lot of the relationship work both um, <clears throat> relationships with their partners, their children, their parents. And it has been shown that while doing that, um, we're in the workforce as well as um, taking care of elderly parents. And in the time of um, the COVID lockdown, it, uh, statistics have shown that the stress was even higher because women still took the bulk of the, loan, of the load of all that, plus doing homeschooling, plus maybe being the only ones that were able to take food to their elderly parents. And with the stress going up, it has led to more physical and psychological symptoms. So people have been getting migraines and tummy aches, but as well as more anxiety and depression. And at times there's been um, more domestic violence in the home, plus uh, use of alcohol and things. So it has been a stressful time and um, relationship wise, um, yeah, women have taken the brunt of it. And, uh, so, um, but generally there's other stresses um, with just when different stages of a child's life, if, if, a, if a woman's got a family and um, that even the most solid relationship when children aren't in school yet, um, like in the preschool years, it's a time where good relationships can come under stress because lack of sleep, some, it's quite new having a new family, adjusting to that. And then a second stress in a developmental um, time frame is when children are going through puberty. So relationships with kids when they're turning from nice obedient kids to strangers as, they, as their brains and hormones change. And then another stage of stress for, for women is when the empty nest starts and kids don't need you anymore and they're either living at home and, and but not there or they've moved out, getting back in touch with your partner. Of course, um, you know, there's also single parenthood, that's a, a major stress. And another 
milestone is menopause for women. And not that menopause is a negative thing, but there's often a lack of understanding by other family members about what's going through and also work colleagues. And so that can be a very stressful time for women. Absolutely. Um, so, Kylie, um, in terms of women accessing your service, um, clearly you offer um, online appointments if necessary. Can people just call you up at the Family Relationship Centre and, and um, ask um, for support? Yes, so if people do want to have counselling or um, have mediation for separating families, they ring up a major number, which is... Um, Will you have it at the end? One three hundred three six four two seven seven, 364 which they can look up on our website. And then there'll be a friendly person on the end who will take some details and then um, link them up with the appropriate uh, uh, service and time. And uh, then they'll give them a little reminder, text message when their appointment's coming up and we'll go from there. Great, thank you, Kylie. And Kyle, if you can maybe leave us as a final parting note, um, what stress, how, what tips might you give women who are looking to deal with those stresses that you've identified? Yes, well, I think um, women used to have to take care of themselves and give themselves breaks and balance and try and get some exercise and good sleep. And so it's sometimes women put everybody else first and themselves last, and that doesn't really help anybody. So there's, there's that's the basics. And on top of that, it's developing good listening skills, which women often do naturally, but really listening so they can identify um, their children or partner's feelings. Um, to use time out when conflict's happening, and there's quite a technique to that, which I probably don't have time to go into now, rather than just walking away, you have to say, I need time out. I need to calm myself and not blame the other person. I want to talk about this in an hour so they have a time to come back. And um, also to listen to their inner voice and, and make it a positive, affirming one, not a negative one, because people sometimes have an inner voice that's saying, you're not good enough and things like that. And um, to remember that the relationship problems what's happening between people. So it's not me to blame or the other to blame, it's what's happening behind. And so people get into patterns. Sometimes it's hard to see your pattern from yourself and that's why it's good to come to counselling. So a third person can help you get out of the pattern and realise what um, each person can do differently to break it out. And so to join a, a counselling group or to go to one of our groups where you can meet other women um, who may have um, you know, to know you're not alone and share some of their wisdom with you. Yeah, beautiful. It's so important, isn't it, to be able to identify when more support's needed and to reach out. Um, and often for women, supporting so many other people and putting other people's needs first can be really common. So to be able to identify that it's really important they get that support as well and find yeah. ways to meet those needs is really critical. So thanks so much, Kylie, for sharing that. We might see you'll get in the Q&A section a little mm -hmm. bit later on. Thank you. So next we have Jackie from the Northern Beaches Women's Shelter with us. Hi, Jackie. Um, I was just wondering if you could just touch on a little bit about your service and how you support women. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Can you know? No. Ben, hello. Ben. Okay, it's just telling me suddenly my internet connection is unstable and it's... Oh, dear, it's never Jackie. been unstable before, so there you go. Ah. Okay, we can ahead anyway. <laughs> I know. I think we can still hear you. Have a go. Yeah. Okay. So, I, okay. You, yeah. So it was really just telling us a little bit more about your service and how you support women. Okay. Great. Thanks. Can you hear me now? Can you wave? Yeah. A... Okay. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> raise a hand if I blank out. I might just be talking to myself. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, I just want to acknowledge and pay our respects to tra traditional custodians on the land on which we, my shelter stands, which is the Guy and My People, because I recognise this is the last day of Reconciliation Week and thank Northern Beaches Council for this really great wellbeing initiative. Um, we are a single women's shelter. We're located on the Northern Beaches. Uh, we're a community initiated pop-up, uh, opened our doors 10 years ago, and um, we have another seven now in our network. We provide accommodation and support services to women over the age of 18 years um, who are unaccompanied by children. 
We have uh, in the shelter, we can support up to 10 single women at any one time for up to three months and um, another 10 in transitional accommodation for up to 12. And an outreach service that can support an additional 10 or 20 women um, who are living at risk of homeless in, homelessness in the community. Um, so, and we also, we have wraparound case management. So we're certainly not just simply um, a roof. Um, we offer support services um, as well in that setting. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Jackie. Um, I, w I was going to um, then ask you that mm -hmm. obviously when women do come to your service, they're in a very vulnerable position. Um, I wondered if you could perhaps touch on some of the underlying issues that they may be presenting with. Mm, for sure. Look, when women come to our service, um, they come from a broad range of circumstances, um, from a chronic, chronic health condition that can make you financially vulnerable. Um, we know very well of women experiencing domestic violence, and that can be an incredibly varied experience incorporating not only physical abuse, um, but emotional and psychological, financial, um, cultural. And these last terms appear vague, but they're very real. And for an example, um, women who are brought into the country on partner visas and then discarded um, and remain in an immigration, no woman's um, land. Um, circumstantial, episodic mental health can manifest with um, depression, debilitating depression and anxiety. And early trauma, uh, childhood trauma, long-term um, abuse can result in chronic mental health. And sometimes these can occur with um, substance abuse. So I guess what I can say is that the majority of women who come to us have, have experienced um, historical or recent trauma. Um, and that homelessness can happen to anyone from all walks of life, but it's not a life sentence. And um, we certainly can and do um, turn that around. Fantastic. Um, and I wondered, just touching on how you work with them, um, obviously you, you case manage, you bring in other services when need be, and how is it some of the key ways that you help women and empower them to get back on, on their feet? I wondered if you could just touch on that a little bit for sure. us. Sure. So we're a holistic wraparound client centered service. We're not just a roof, as I said a moment ago. We collaborate with the women who come to us, starting with where did you come from and, and what was that journey? We take stock. And then we do, where do we go from here and what are the next steps? Obviously, housing is key to homelessness, but what that is and what it looks like for everyone is different. So we look at a range of domains in your life that sit behind um, your homelessness. And in doing that, we pull together um, what we've dubbed uh, TLC, which is a tender living in care plan and it's a way of being tended to ourselves um, we, we we look at all the different domains in your life that might have contributed to homelessness um, so that might be around financial independence it's like a bit like going to the dentist or ripping a band-aid off you know we look at a budget debts and income those horrible things um, because finance is not not a priority for many women you know um, it's often um, secondary uh, to family and relationships. Um, and uh, it's so critical to a sense of independence and a feeling of control. So we work very closely around that. Um, we also work with Lifeline financial counsellors um, if that, that's required. Um, legal services, we um, get support or provide support around domestic violence matters, um, shared parenting arrangements, financial. Help you there, Jackie. I think we lost Jackie. Oh, also you're no, great. Um, yeah. <laughs> just drop again? back. Okay. You're fine. You're back again. All right. Okay, just wave a hand, otherwise I'm talking to myself, sorry. Um, and so, yeah, with COVID, there's been a lot of pressure on um, people living in isolation in quite um, pressurised um, situations, and that's certainly manifesting in increased demand on services around domestic violence. Um, mental health, we put a plan around mental health. Um, as I said, it can often be circumstantial, but it can also be chronic. Um, uh, addiction, we work very closely with Kadesh and smart recovery. Um, and you know, when you've experienced trauma or have mental health concerns, it's not uncommon to turn to um, substances um, as uh, a support, not wisely, not good choices. Um, so we certainly support people in recovery um, there as well. 
Um, and paramount to a sense of control and agency is work and education. So it doesn't define us, but it's certainly um, one of the things that um, helps us define ourselves. And I really love what we do um, working with women because we're not just parents, carers, sisters, wives or mothers. We're not just defined by the relationships around us. We're also defined by all these other domains in our life. And you, when, when we rely on one of those and something goes wrong, then obviously our wellness um, can be severely affected. So having a, a health in a, in a range of domains um, supports us and supports our well-being. I know um, um, that, you know, in our areas of health as well, we work with women. Um, I know that we struggle every day with um, our physical image. Um, that's something that women have to deal with. Uh, whenever we look in the mirror or try on a new outfit, we are overlaying the images of billboards and advertising on ourselves. I don't think men do that, but we do that. <clears throat> I think there's a huge mental health burden that comes about from that. But um, our health is not just how we look, it's how we feel. Um, it's how confident we are in our skin, regardless of our age. So we encourage people to stay active, um, bike rides, swimming, walking, yoga, um, those kind of activities. And being connected, encouraging people to maintain relationships, friendships, and we have well, wellness programs in the shelter as well. Um, gardening, knitting, sewing, craft, cooking, they sound so simple, um, but they're just reintroducing those small, simple joys um, that can really support our well-being. And it's about connection in that, those, those activities as well. Um, so we put around all of that a safety plan. What keeps you safe? What keeps you well? What to avoid and what things to do that keep you buoyant and happy um, and inspired? Putting good services and people around yourself as well and avoiding negative influences um, is really important. If you need support around that, reaching out to a friend or going to see a GP like Gilda, um, getting a mental health care plan can really be supportive. And I guess the final bit for us in our TLC, um, and I use this in my own life. I often run a ruler over the different domains for myself. How am I going, you know, in each of those? Um, is an exit plan, you know, that is blue sky mining. What are your hopes and dreams? And, and, and how do we help you start that journey? It's one little step at a time, but we just rem remind each other and remind the women in the, in the shelter that everything passes. What, what looks insurmountable today will be in the past tomorrow, you know, and the sun, the sun does shine again. You know, we see so many good stories um, at the end of our time with people at the shelter. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Jackie. I think that was so eloquently put and certainly I think <laughs> so many wise words that we can all take on um, in the future. Um, so very briefly, I just wondered if you could uh, tell women and those, you know, that are tuning in today, how can they access your service very briefly? Look, sure, just through our website is probably the main way. We're also on Facebook, but we also, if, look, we can't tell you where we are. You can't walk through the door, but we work very closely with Northern Beaches Community and Manly. So walk through their door and say, look, I, I really need some support. We're not a crisis service. Um, we work with a lot of partners. We're really an accommodation support service, but certainly um, reach out to us through either our website or Northern Beaches Community. Fantastic, mm. thank you. And what I really love, Jackie, is how you've outlined some of the complexities that can lead to people crossing that line, which I think is often thinner than we think between, you know, everything being stable and everything suddenly being up in the air. And you've also talked about how some of your complexity in your service in how, in how you support women um, and that it's a very multi-layered approach. It's not a simple fix, but you have a lot of different ways of supporting um, women who find themselves <laughs> in that position to get back mm -hmm. on their feet again. So it's really For great sure. to hear. Some Everyone's story is different. Yeah. 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 Right. And it sounds like you meet that difference. I met some of your volunteers this week and, you know, the ways that they're able to connect and provide that support, you know, at all those different levels, I think is really, um, really beautiful thing. So thank you for sharing and being part of this tonight. No, thanks for having us all. Mm. Thank you. So just a reminder to everyone, if you do want to submit a question to any of our presenters, so that Q&A button is down on the toolbar at the bottom middle of your screen. So uh, please do submit a question or as questions come up for you as we go, please do write them in and we'll, uh, we'll attend to some of those towards the end. So we now have Simran from Kadesh Rehabilitation Services. Simran, can you tell us a little bit about your service? 
Yes, hi Mike. Um, hi. So Kadesh is um, a residential drug and alcohol treatment facility, which is based on the grounds of Monavale Hospital. Um, we used to be at Manly, but we moved over here um, just over a year and a half ago. Um, so Kadesh has been in operation for about nine years now on the Northern Beaches and is the only, um, I guess, public um, drug and alcohol residential facility in this area. Um, it's a 10 bed service, so um, we have males and females stay with us for um, a period of about nine weeks. And um, they complete a program with us and the program is um, quite holistic. So in the program, um, they will learn different skills through group work, um, mainly um, using CBT and um, DBT. Um, we also engage them in counselling and case management, and we help them to um, that we help them with living skills as well. Um, so it's quite a tailored program because we're only a small facility. We can work really closely with the clients and each client kind of needs something different. Um, so, um, you know, I think that kind of helps people to feel really um, at home with us. Um, I think what's also different about our program is the clients are allowed to go on leave. So some facilities won't allow contact with um, family members um, just I guess to keep them safe and for various other reasons but our clients are allowed to go on leave during the program which means that it's great for women that have families and um, you know want to you know keep in contact with their loved ones. Um, we also run smart recovery meetings as well um, and we've currently got one running online um, which you know anyone can access. Mm. Thanks Imran and obviously the connection that happens within services such as yours is really critical you know and the group work can be really supportive of that and I like how you also allow that contact with family recognizing that those supports are really important as well. Can you perhaps touch on some of the underlying issues that you see with people who do present to your service? Yeah, so um, we generally see people who, who have um, co-occurring mental health issues. Um, so anxiety um, and depression um, are quite common um, in our cohort of clients. Um, social anxiety is one of the issues that we see. So, you know, people can use um, drugs or alcohol to um, assist with, you know, anxiety that they're feeling um, around being in social circles or social groups. Um, we also see women um, come in with stress or burnout. Um, often um, people can use drugs or alcohol um, as a coping mechanism and um, you know they kind of keep that um, substance um, or they use that substance to kind of keep them going in a way and to give them kind of um, motivation um, in, in different ways. Um, also a lot of our clients do have trauma, a history of trauma or, and also complex trauma um, childhood trauma, um, we see women who, um, and we work very closely with Jackie, so women who have been in domestic violence situations, um, women who are homeless, um, we do have um, on, the be on the northern beaches there is an issue with um, women um, who, are, who are older and being homeless. Um, so um, we see that kind of population in um, this setting. Um, gambling um, is also um, something that we see in some of our clients. Um, and I think there is generally um, 
you know, quite a culture of drinking on the northern beaches. Um, and so we do see, um, you know, quite a large amount of our population um, is, you know, um, are using alcohol um, as a way of self-medicating. Yeah, it's really become normalised, hasn't it, in our, in our society, you know, just having that glass of wine when things are tough or, you know, drinking after a difficult day. All of that has become really normalised in our speech, our conversations, our, our social circles. And for some, managing that becomes a real problem. And often I imagine you would see people for whom that has become unmanageable. Yeah, we do. And um, that, that's probably the point when we do see our clients, um, when it's when things aren't working at home or at work anymore and they've become quite isolated and dependent on the substance. Um, and they're only able to function if they are using that substance. Um, yeah, and I, you know, I also think there's quite a lot of shame around reaching out and getting help. Um, you know, there's, there's kind of quite a culture of, you know, wanting to, to kind of, you know, look good on the outside um, when inside things aren't going so well for, for people and they'll turn to drugs or alcohol um, as, you know, as a way, as an outlet really. Yeah, and, and both you and Jackie have touched on some of the significant pressures that can be on women. And often there's this expectation that they're all things to all people or they look a certain way, act a certain way. Um, so much pressure and yet not always easy to manage that pressure. So what would you advise women who are struggling with that issue of trying to navigate um, those pressures in their life? I would, um, I would say that um, to reach out you know, just to reach out and try and get some help for yourself. Um, I think that, um, I think Kylie was talking about how women don't put themselves first and they kind of, um, you know, if they're looking after families or they've got jobs, it makes it more difficult for them to access the help that they need because they kind of have more responsibilities. Um, so I would say, you know, reaching out is really important and we try and, you know, we try and do our best to reduce the stigma of, you know, you know, having a, a substance use issue, um, you know, and we try and make it an easy, an easy process for them. I think everyone's journey in recovery is different. Um, it's such a personal journey and um, there is no quick fix. Um, but I think it's really important that members of the community encourage women to actually pick up the phone. Um, there are a lot of support services out there that can help, um, even just accessing your GP um, as a first, you know, point of call um, is, you know, I think can be helpful. Um, I think women need to be um, kind of encouraged to make choices that are right for them. There's no kind of um, one right path for, for people to go down. Um, but um, I think, you know, we need to kind of empower women to make the right choice for them. Um, and also people that are kind of living with others that have um, a substance use issue, I would encourage them to get help for themselves, you know, because they're often um, also, you know, as kind of struggling with trying to support someone else through that. So um, it's really important that, you know, if you're supporting someone that you get support for yourself. Yeah, it's so critical, isn't it? You know, there has to be more support in the system when people are struggling, you know, including those people that are close to you. Thanks, Emran. So how might someone access your service if they are struggling with alcohol or other drugs or realise that maybe they do need someone to talk to, maybe they do need some extra support for them or someone they're close to? So um, people can call our um, community access service and even if you just kind of want to have a chat and 
just want to kind of have a bit of a, um, you know, just get a feeling of for what we do. Um, I think just to give the Community Access Centre a call um, and they will either take you through a screening process um, or an assessment um, or they might um, even refer you to, you know, some other services that might be more suitable. Thanks, Simran. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, Simran. Um, so it's time for our last speaker of the night. Um, very topical because we've been talking about the importance of GPs and we really appreciate Dr. Jill de Brunello from General Practice Cremorne who's joined us tonight. Um, Jill, de, welcome. And I wondered if you could perhaps tell us a little bit about yourself and perhaps your practice and your interests. Thank you very much. Firstly, um, I would also like to acknowledge Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people um, as the traditional custodians of the land that we meet on tonight, all in the different places. I would like to pay respects to the elders of the past and the present and the future and acknowledge their spiritual connection to our country. Um, this has been a great webinar. I mean, I, I've learned so much stuff about, I knew about all the services, but I didn't know how extensive the services were. So I'm kind of feeling like, um, I'm glad I'm the last speaker because I've learned heaps and heaps from all of you. Um, I work in a general practice in Cremon. Uh, I see uh, everybody, kids, adults, men, women, everybody, all ages. Um, I have a really big interest in mental health that's developed over my time in practice. Um, I also work for Headspace uh, with youth um, uh, as well. So yeah, that's what that's me. Thanks, Gilda. And I guess you've heard from, as you said, from all of the speakers tonight, there seems to be a lot of um, you know, similar themes in a lot of the content that our other speakers have spoken to. Are they similar types of issues that women might, might uh, display when they, when they present to you as a GP? I think Kylie gave a fabulous uh, kind of overview of a woman's life and um, how they present in each different, in each different um, time in their life. I guess that the beauty of the position that I'm in is that women often present to me as not the person presenting. So sometimes the child presents and that, and it's really, you know, and then we get talking about uh, what's going on in the woman's life. Because I think as all the speakers have pointed out, women tend to be the glue that glues everyone together and they often put it themselves last and they often don't look after themselves. And I don't know how many times a day I say to people, look, you know, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you about your child or your husband or your mother or whatever, but if you don't look after yourself, then, then nobody is going to be okay. And so you really do need to stop, take a breath, and we need to spend some time talking about you. And it, sometimes that's just hard in itself. But I see, um, I have the privilege also of often walking with women through, through their lives. And, and so maybe the drug and alcohol problem is there and we talk about how much they drink and then we might talk about it again and then we might talk about it again and then one day they come in for help. Sometimes um, they just put their hands up and say, hey, you know, I, I need some help with my mental health. Um, I need a referral. I need some help from you. I think um, one thing about GPs is we don't know everything. We are generalists, but we are really good at accessing help for people and looking and searching for it and finding the right people for them to see. Thank you for that. And so touching on that, when a woman does present and uh, requires some support in terms around their mental health and wellbeing, what is exactly that you can do to support them at that point? So sometimes it's just a matter of um, supporting them in our general practice. Sometimes they need to go and see specialists and specialist services. Um, one of the wonderful things that happened a number of years ago was the government uh, provided us with a mental health care plan 
which is a um, piece of paperwork uh, that we do in the general practice that allows women to access uh, psychology services uh, uh, with a rebate for Medicare. They don't get all of the money back, but they get a lot of the money back. We also, in addition to that, if women uh, can't afford um, mental health services, even under that plan, we have another scheme called Access Plus, which they sometimes will. And, and, and that's a very unique thing to um, our district, actually, um, where we can actually supplement um, the, 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 uh, the money for the, me the mental health care plan, too. Um, and um, we have a couple of other things that we can access to get people support and, and money. But I guess we kind of become the, the trampoline where, where people don't know where to go. They often will drop into their GP first to get some help, yeah. Very important, often that first point of contact really, isn't it? And then you can refer on from there if need be. Um, I know when we spoke um, a couple of weeks ago, you were telling me about that relation, that really important relationship that a woman can foster with a GP. And I wondered what advice you might give women when they're considering reaching out uh, to their GP or maybe finding the right GP that might be the right fit for them. How they, how they develop that relationship. I think um, it's really important to find your own GP. I think it's very, very important to find somebody that you connect with and who um, does things your way. I mean, you know, in your health and your mental health and your life, you're the boss and we're the helpers. And um, I think it's important to go looking for that right person. So, you know, we often go to... Um, the local medical clinic and see whoever's on in, in a, an emergency or when you've got a cold or when you need a x-ray or when you need a script. But I think what everybody would benefit from is to have one GP that they see on a regular basis who gets to know them over their life and who they can, um, you know, work with. I think you... You know, there's two things I reckon that's hard to find when you move a city, and that's a good hairdresser and a good GP. I think you've got to actually go out and interview your GP. You know, um, you know, you might not like me, but you might like the person next door to me. And, um, and uh, you can still use the practice and see the other GPs in the practice, but it's very important to have that relationship so that when you do say... Uh, go, mm, maybe I have an alcohol problem, you're not going to be so intimidated uh, by going to ask for help. When you do say, wow, you know, I actually need help, it's going to be easier for you. I think the other thing that's really useful for people to get, particularly as they get older, is a pharmacist, uh, a chemist that they go to regularly. Because um, uh, they get given, people get given drugs with all different names that change names all the time depending upon the brand and they get, get given drugs from all different people and if you go to the same pharmacist all the time they, they can keep an eye on that and make sure there's no interactions and no problems and uh, they can often supply them when you don't have a script temporarily if they've got a relationship with your GP. So having a good team around you, GP you relate to and a pharmacist you see all the time I think is really useful. Thank you, Gilda. Um, I think that really reinforced that common theme of the importance of relationships and connection um, and the support out there that we can reach out and seek that support if we need to. And certainly GPs are often the first point of contact. So that's really important. So thank you so much for your wise words. Um, mm. Over to you, Mike. Yeah, it really strikes me, you know, when we talk about the importance of relationships that each of you who have spoken, you've, you've identified how critical it is when women access support, that they're able to connect with the people who are supporting them. And certainly, in, in whether it's a hairdresser or a GP um, or a therapist, you know, it's really important that that relationship is there. Um, however, we know that often sometimes women can be really isolated. Even if they have people around them, they may feel really isolated or disconnected, including isolated from their own families. So I might throw to you, Kylie, 
um, from Relationships Australia, if someone is feeling really isolated or struggling with those connections or maybe haven't spoken to their family for some time, um, how, what, what might you advise them or how might you work with people in that situation? Oh, we'll just get you to unmute, Kylie. The old mute button, I get you every time. <laughs> Thanks. I think it's a really good time for, for them to go and seek some counselling and have a chat with a counsellor because sometimes there's things that we can say to ourselves which might stop us from reaching out and making connections. There's lots of places to make connections if you're a single person, like joining local groups, sporting groups, gardening groups, surf club, and just get out there and volunteer and then just relax to meet people. And I think one of the main things in making connections is to reciprocate. If somebody texts you, text them back. If somebody phones you, phone them back. If somebody smiles, smile back. But if they don't text you back and if they don't call, move on. Don't get fixated, don't get worried, it's not personal. They've got something else going on. And uh, you can talk to your counsellor about that if you have one or your, um, yeah, your friends. But it is hard being isolated out there, especially in these times when people who are single usually do go out and mingle and have to had to stay at home. And so I'm glad that now people can get out there a bit more. Yeah, that's great. And we know that loneliness is a state where we don't feel connected to others. So we might be surrounded by people, but if we don't feel connected, loneliness can be a real issue and it has significant health implications for people if they're feeling isolated, they're feeling alone. So as you say, you know, often if people are feeling lonely, they'll, they'll read things in to communications that may not be there. So really supporting those people, you know, or if you're in that situation yourself, recognising that that feeling of loneliness can impact um, your understanding of what's happening in those connections and to keep reaching out, keep looking for those connections, um, keep engaging with that support. We need it as humans to be well and we need it to be healthy. Thanks, Kylie. Okay, so we're into the Q&A session now, so I'd encourage everybody to keep sending their questions through. Um, I've got a question that I might throw to Gilda. Uh, Gilda, this question is, how can we as a community better support others in needs. And um, before you answer that, I might just also touch on the importance of um, the suicide prevention gatekeeper training that we're, uh, we're funded to run these webinars through and the importance of learning those skills to be able to identify when somebody might be doing it really, really tough. They, they are really basic skills that people can learn uh, to look out for the signs, to have open conversations with people. So, sorry, just a little bit of promo there for our, our project and our training. But, um, Gilda, I wondered if you could just touch on how can we support those around us? Um, I think um, listening to people uh, is, is important. I think uh, being available to people is also important. So... I mean, one of the things that I talk to people about a lot is that, you know, it, it's not necessarily your job to fix somebody, but if you are there to listen and you say, you know, are you okay? Or you identify, say, for instance, look, you know, you're not yourself. You're kind of not yourself at the moment, and I've noticed that. And I was wondering if there's anything going on, and if there is, would you like to talk to me? I think... That is your first step. Sometimes they won't talk to you. Sometimes they will talk to you. Sometimes they will talk to you later. I think it's just being available for people. And then if somebody does come to you with a problem that you feel like you can't handle, you know, don't be frightened of that, but uh, take them somewhere. I mean, like any of these services uh, or your GP, take them somewhere and say, hey, I'll go with you. I'll, I'll give you a hand. I'll, I'll help you out with this. I'll stay stay connected to you until we find some help. But the um, important thing is for people to realise that it's not their job to fix them. It's just their job to help them access help. Great words of advice. Thank you so much, Gilda. Yeah, well said. Um, so given that there can be significant change and challenge happening for somebody. What kind of strategies, uh, I might throw this to you, Jackie, um, what kind of strategies might someone implement to deal with those challenges and change if they find themselves in that position? Well, I, I guess at the moment, one of the things um, that we're dealing with is the COVID-19 world. I mean, wow. 
um, we've all been thrown into um, deep change as a, as a nation, as a community and as individuals. And I guess for me um, and for what I see around me is mm, trying not to be single point sensitive, you know, having a range of um, ways and measures that you can keep yourself well and happy um, so some people will just rely on a relationship. Um, some people might rely on their role um, as a parent. Um, you might rely on um, a substance, you know, whatever it be. Um, I think we really need to have a number of strings to our bow um, in our life and um, look um, to those to keep us um, well and hale and hearty. Um, I have to say that I didn't spend a lot of time at home on the weekends. I was always out and about, but I've learnt um, to enjoy the garden. So that's, that's change. Um, and so I guess it's being resourceful, a little bit resilient um, and looking for the small joys in things. So not forgetting to take care of yourself um, in amongst all of that, not just focusing on other people. I think that women tend to really focus on other people and get a sense of their own self-worth from their relationships and I think it's really important for us to um, find that that self-worth uh, from our own sense of value um, in ourselves and if we have that then that resilience and adaptability to change will be there yeah yeah beautiful Jackie I love hearing you really consolidate that theme that's emerged mm -hmm. tonight about putting others first putting those relationships first as a definer of, of, of who a woman might be. Um, and I, I really like that idea that you talk about the diversity, you know, getting involved in different areas, different things, having more, um, more facets to your life. So if one disappears or gets really impacted, such as in the pandemic, you've got other things that you can, go, you can turn to or you can develop. So yeah, thank for you. sure. I learned to play the piano. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> badly. <laughs> I won't demonstrate. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you, Jackie. Um, we've got another question that's come in that I, I might throw to Simran. And uh, this question, Simran, is, um, we may well have touched on this um, a little bit already, um, is who can I talk to if I'm experiencing challenges? I know we have a GP in the room, which is great, but I just wondered if there was anything that you would like to tease out with that question, Simran, about who we can turn to if we're experiencing challenges in our lives. Yeah, I would say um, that you need to be able to speak to someone who you feel safe with. So I think safety, um, you know, is really important. Um, if, if you have someone that you trust, um, that that's probably the right person to speak to. Um, I think... Um, you know, like reaching out to some of the services. Um, we like we're currently offering counselling online as well. Um, I think people being able to access counselling kind of in their home is, and um, you know, it's pretty amazing. Um, you know, to be able to have that resource at the moment. Um, and you know, I encourage people to try and use that. Uh, because um, if, you, if you're having challenges to, you know, it, to have counselling kind of online is a lot more accessible, so you don't really need to go anywhere. It's kind of like it's, you know, it's kind of at your, your fingertips. So um, I think trying to uh, speak to a healthcare professional is a counsellor, um, you know, or uh, another support service in, in the community um, is really important. And I think there's a lot of extra services that are around at the moment, a lot of extra services that are being offered um, because of COVID-19. Um, so, um, you know, I think it's, you know, it's a lot easier to access the help that you need if you are feeling challenged. Thanks, Simran. It really is interesting to see how things have changed and how supports perhaps are more readily available and more accessible in some ways going online. Um, and certainly I think throughout all of these webinars, we do hope to 
reinforce to our community the whole range of local supports and services that are out there for everybody. So hopefully we can get that message across. It's so mm. critical, isn't it, Sue, mm. that you know, people understand there is help out there Absolutely. and that when we're really struggling that there are some great services out there and some great people who understand and can offer that support. But of course sometimes we have people in our lives who we know might need some help or support but for whatever reason they don't want to reach out and seek it. Um, Gilda, what would you suggest, um, one of our questions tonight is, what would you suggest for someone, um, if someone you know needs help, doesn't want to seek that help? Yeah, good question. Um, I think uh, sometimes you have to bring it back to yourself. Um, sometimes you have to bring it back to you getting help and advice on how to manage that person or kind of influence or steer that person or encourage that person to get some help. Um, GPs are great at um, working with people or at being a little bit, say, sneaky. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't know how many times it's happened that somebody's wife has, some, um, somebody's um, wife has rung me up and said, hey, you know, look, my husband's coming in to see you today for his blood pressure check, but I think he's really depressed. Could you, I just wanted to let you know, maybe you could bring that into the conversation. So we're great like that because we've got this ability to enter into a conversation in a safe way. We start with something physical, which people don't mind presenting around. Um, so, you know, as sometimes with, in particular, young people, often their friends will say, you know, hey, I, I understand that you don't want to get some help, but, you know, how about you just come and meet this person with me? Um, uh, but, but it is hard and you, sometimes you actually, you know, I was thinking a lot about what we were talking about with drug and alcohol and um, the families of people that have drug and alcohol problems getting help. I mean, sometimes that's where you have to start. You have to go to those support groups uh, like Al-Anon that um, help families of alcoholics and in you getting some help, you end up leading that person into help. So yeah, sometimes, but you know, the direct method sometimes doesn't work. It's just being around, being listening, um, guiding, talking to other people about how you can draw them in. Yeah, great. Thanks, Gilda. And sometimes just letting them know that you're available and you're there, you know, so when they are ready, um, that you're someone they may be able to speak to. So, Sue, there's no doubt some people listening to this webinar are hearing some of these amazing services and wondering how they might be able to help or support mm -hmm. um, others. What, what would you suggest? Well, yet again, I'd reinforce the importance of learning the skills, suicide first aid skills, which are just as important as CPR in some ways, physical and mental health go hand in hand. Um, so we'd very much encourage people to go online and register for suicide prevention training that we're offering online at the moment. Um, we'll be offering these webinars over the next few weeks, and then we'll be looking at other ways of um, supporting and teasing out some of the, uh, the issues and ways that we can raise awareness and knowledge about key issues, key stresses, and the local supports and services. The other key thing I just want to mention is um, for community members that want to do more, we um, are looking at Wesley Life Force coming to the Northern Beaches and establishing what's called a local suicide prevention network. So that's a community space. It's a group that uh, encourages community members, those with lived experience of mental health or mental ill health and suicide. Um, and we had actually planned to have an open meeting on that um, in March. That was, uh, was of course postponed. My understanding is that Wesley will have a webinar lined up on the last Wednesday after the end of our webinar. So I believe it's Wednesday the 8th of July. So we'll keep everybody posted on that. If you, when you registered for this webinar and you ticked that you wanted to still be kept up to date with um, local suicide prevention initiatives, we'll let you know about that information. So that's a really great way of actually getting involved from on the ground. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks, Sue. And I better give a quick plug for our Lifeline uh, DV support group um, that's starting at the end of this month as well. It's going to be an eight-week course for people who have left a domestic violence relationship. Um, so do contact Lifeline Northern Beaches 
if that's of interest for you. And also note that, you know, we've talked about some big topics tonight. Some, some people of you here who may be watching may have your own lived experience um, with mental health or with other challenges, and some of what we talked about may have impacted you in some way. So if that's the case, I really encourage you to reach out to a family member or a friend um, or call one of the lines that we've had um, displayed on the screen tonight, Lifeline. 100 respect or one of the other services who might be able to offer you some support and I really hope that that theme of reaching out has come through tonight. Um, we didn't get to all the questions that were submitted tonight but thank you for everyone who submitted a question. Um, it's been really great to have that, uh, that interaction and that feedback. Thank you Mike. So we've come to the end of our webinar tonight. Um, so I'd just like to say to all of our speakers who I can see on the screen um, and to Mike and the team from Lifeline Northern Beaches who have actually helped us develop um, all the webinars, we're extremely grateful for your time and your insights. Um, thank you also to the staff from Glen Street Theatre who provided us with the venue and their technical expertise and also a big shout out to Liz and Jess who have worked very hard behind the scenes to make these happen, these webinars. Uh, so to all of you who logged on to join us t t uh, today, thank you so much for your interest in your questions and we'll be following up with an email after this one. And we do hope this has provided you with a greater understanding of the key stressors around mental health as well as building this connection with some of the great local supports and services we've got. Check out the website, register for the next webinar and for training. Um, the next uh, webinar will be focused on youth mental health and wellbeing. Um, make sure you share the webinars with family, friends and workmates. Um, obviously register for Gatekeeper Training if you would like to do that. And thank you again. Stay safe, take care and we'll see you next week. Thanks everyone. Good Thanks. night.